Hi, this is Rick. Uh, welcome to the directcaster.com podcast. And today we're going to touch on, a, I think, a topic that a lot of you are going to connect with. I know certainly I connect with this topic now, and uh, it impacts people more than ever. And that is the topic of inflation and the economy. So we all kind of have a challenge right now. Um, I know there's some people that say, oh, you don't worry about it. It's, it's not a big challenge. No, it's a really big challenge. This is a challenge. It's an unaffordability crisis. Um, everything from the supermarket to all the products and services you purchase are going up in price. We're pretty proud to announce that we actually have the same price as we did uh, prior to the pandemic. So we've tried to hold the line as much as possible on prices. Um, but what, what, I'm, what I'm here today to, to share with you is that while there's no real way to make prices come down, um, there is a way to, to generate some more income because after all, that's what we need. Salaries and wages aren't going to go up that quick to generate all the income that we need. It's just not going to work. It's not going to happen. So what we can do, however, is we can bring on additional sources of revenue and income, and that's what we're talking about here today. Um, so without further ado, uh, let's go get started on uh, today's content. So on our, on our website, we have this article uh, entitled uh, Fight Inflation, Earn Extra Money in This Bad Economy with Your Own Roku Channel. So we're talking about inflation and how that's a reality for everyone. Our purchasing power has been diminished. The US dollar just simply does not buy what it did even back in, in 2018 or 2019. If you think back to those times, think about the prices then. The prices were much, much lower. Then what happens in 2020? Well, we had a big, you know, we, we get a big kerfuffle in, in our lives going on. Um, there's, a, there's something that's going around. Everybody's catching it. And then we get, we're into 2020 and guess what? Mm, then, then we start to see, wow, uh, something, something's big. It's happening here. It's happening. People are getting sick. Um, so we moved through 2020 and we, we, we seem to control inflation fine even through most of, of, of the big problem. But then what we start to do in 2021 is we see, start to see a massive spike in inflation. Now, where did this spike in inflation come from? And I promise I won't stay on this topic too long. We'll get right onto the Roku topic. But inflation essentially came from one place. It came first from fuel prices. So what the market started to do in early 2021 is it started to panic because it thought there was going to be less oil that was going to be around. Uh, there was also problems with, with shipments, although not too much really domestically. There was problems, a lot of problems with shipping. Uh, shipping wasn't delivering products in time. So that, that kind of contributed to it. The other thing is there was a big panic among oil traders that basically a lot of oil, especially oil we had here in the United States, was now going to go offline. And as you know, oil, oil probably is the single biggest contributing factor in the price of most physical products and goods because they have to get here on trucks. And trucks require a huge amount of diesel fuel. And what was happening around the beginning of 2021 is that price of diesel fuel was skyrocketing. So in the beginning of 2021, we had essentially two problems. We had all the oil traders kind of really, really freaked out and they were driving up the prices of oil. They had heard the United States was cutting off um, oil production and the speculators went mad and that drives up the price of oil. You don't really want to spook the markets. 
that's one thing you don't want to do. You don't want to come in and spook the markets and tell them all kinds of oil production is going to be off the table. And boy, that's what happened. And guess what the oil speculators did? They drove that price up. I don't know if you remember back then, but we started to see this. We started to see a straight line shooting up for the price of oil. Then we had a second problem. The good old, uh, you know, little bug that had been going around caused and every and everything shut down well that caused a shortage in things so either we couldn't get the ships into port remember that that was a that was a large kerfuffle that went on somehow the ships were all sitting out there but the ports couldn't get in couldn't get the ships processed and into port so to get the goods off that that we needed that was one of the uh, the problems we had that we had supply chain issue problems and we had this fuel problem now those two issues, really that were a result of what happened in 2020 caused this. It caused massive inflation. And people will tell you, you know, they'll, they'll start to blame, you know, politically what happened. There were things, believe me, politically that contributed to this, especially to the spike in the oil prices, which didn't have to occur. But more than anything, it was the 2020 situation and that allowed a lot of companies to reset. And so when they reset, they decided that it was time because of using these other excuses. Oh, we couldn't get things or oh, gee, supply chain is down. We really can't get the, get the goods and services through the supply chain. Or wow, that price of oil sure spiked up right in the beginning of 2021. It just started going right up. So we have to raise prices. So this is kind of what happened. And ever since 2021, we've been on a price spike and a big, big price spike. And there was enough fuel to fuel that spike for quite some number of years now. We've been from 2021 to here we're sitting in 2024 and we still have this price spike. Now they try to tell you on the news and this is so funny. I just love it when they do this. I say, what a bunch of characters, what a bunch, what a bunch of uh, basically theater actors trying to make it seem like inflation is under control. So here's what happened. Inflation was going up like this in 2021, 22, 23. Now we reached 24. Prices are still going up. They're not coming down. They're still going up just like that on a big trajectory. They, they just aren't going up quite as fast as they used to. So does that make the price affordable? Does that make prices when you go to the grocery store, does that make that affordable? I don't think it makes it affordable. I think all we've done is we're not quite going up so steep, but the price is still set way too high for you to afford. So you go to the grocery store, you buy that things, those things you need, you come back out, and then a couple of days later, you look at your bank account and you said, where does the money go? Well, it's all going to all these big, big companies. And I'm talking big companies that that stock the grocery stores with their products. Now, this is another little pet peeve of mine. Just just to, to bear with me for a second. Um, what goes on in the economy is that you go to the grocery store. That's not really capitalism. Isn't that strange? Because capitalism would let every product say every dish soap that's produced anywhere in the United States, capitalism would let that brand compete in the, in the grocery store. But the grocery store has made deals with only the largest suppliers, usually the private equity guys. And they're the only ones that get their, their uh, dish soap in. So the fact that you have, you know, palm olive dish soap, but I can go down to Dollar Tree and I can get this super deluxe dish soap that's like three times as much for only a dollar twenty-five. So how does that work? Well, this is not really, you know, capitalism at the the big grocery store there. That's not really capitalism. That's kind of monopoly. But that's a topic for another day. The problem is your your pocketbook is you know is getting pinched. And you can try to go to work and you can try to get, you know, grab a few more dollars. 
And you could say, you know, to your boss, you know, but your boss has a hard time too because here's what's happening. Salaries and wages. Interesting thing about salaries and wages. Salaries, as people usually think, well, my boss only has to pay me my salary. Hmm. Wouldn't that be nice? But the boss has to pay the salary and a bunch of government taxes on top of the salary, making the salary, whatever he's paying, making that salary probably about one and a half to two times greater than the actual salary he's paying. So by the time he gets done paying the government for employing an employee, he is paying double. So if he's already paying high, he can't really go much further. So we think about, well, what's the thing? Should we switch jobs? We could do that. We could just switch jobs. Well, right now, as we all know, it's not really easy to get a job. So we're like, oh, what do we do? What can I do? Well, I'm here to tell you that part of the answer is you need to put your product and your brand out there right now. And that brand, if that has to do with entertainment, if that has to do with information, then what I want to tell you is now is the time for you to create your own streaming channel and sell subscriptions to it. Um, there are some other options too. We're going to go over that a little bit later. There are subscriptions, there's advertising, there's brand sponsorships. But if you get your own Roku channel now, or if, or if you get a Fire TV channel with us, we usually advise people to go with Roku first. It's absolutely, hands down, the most successful for all of our customers. Roku channels are the most successful. Roku has a tremendous platform. Fire TV has a second best platform. So those two are really spectacular. And mobile often offers a great platform, as especially if a lot of people are looking for things on the go. So let's talk about a Roku channel. Let's say you go out there and you put up a Roku channel and you put up your product and service. Now you have just moved yourself into a whole different category. You're moving yourself now in a whole different category. You're moving yourself from, I only get wages uh, and, what, and, and what the boss can afford to pay me and go easy on the boss as I said, because the boss figured that the boss cost for the salary is about double, thanks to government taxes, uh, of about what he's paying you. So he takes and he pays you what he pays you, and then he takes and pays the government about, uh, about uh, three quarters uh, of your salary to the government in taxes. So he's like, he's like up to here. He's up to here. He can't, he can't do any more. Or she, I'm sorry, because a lot of, of, of great business leaders I know are actually um, coming on board right now. Uh, we've got both men. We've got women. They are seeing the vision and they're moving towards the future. And the future is really um, not only your, your second gig. I mean, you could drive for Uber. There's nothing wrong with that. You can drive for Uber. You can get that second job. But what if you could earn money passively? What if you sold subscriptions to your channel and people would pay you and that money would come in without you going out and going to strange neighborhoods and driving around? What if you could do that passively? And that's what I'm here to tell you today you can do. So one of the best ways to fight inflation, because we can't really, we can do a couple of things. And I mean, there, there are things that you can do. Number one, trade down to the store brand. But I would say go even below that. Go right down to the Dollar Tree and get that dish soap. Because you know what? Here in California where I'm seeing, they're trying to get dish soap passed off for three and four dollars a bottle. I can go to Dollar Tree for $1.25 and get the same dish soap. Go to Dollar Tree and buy your dish soap. Just a little tip. You know, don't pay the price at the store. It's all just liquid soap in the end. You know, there are some differences. If you got a lot of grease all the time, yeah, Dawn really does work better. Uh, but you're, if you're an average person, you're just cooking average meals, yeah, just go to Dollar Tree and get the, get in the dish soap. So we can fight inflation like that. We can learn about the best values and we can do those things. But the other thing I want to put in your pocket, I want to give some ammo to you, 
and that is you could create a Roku channel. So a Roku channel here, so now we're in, now we're a why a Roku channel? Because you can market that channel to thousands or millions actually now of streaming people, of streamers, streamers that are online. Millions of streamers online that are watching streaming. In fact, streaming, I don't know about you, I'm watching streaming all the time. Now it's not just because of, of our business. I'm just watching streaming all the time because I can get the great content I'm looking for rather than the content that happens to be on. So that's why I love streaming is the on-demand features of it. You can have that. You can drill into a niche. Now, it's really important to find your niche. Uh, one thing I always tell people is make sure that the content you have, make sure that that content you have is niched. Uh, the variety shows might be interesting, but they don't sell subscriptions. People want content and they want it on one subject. So make sure you get into that niche, find that niche and get your content of, uh, out there and available. So a Roku channel offers you the ability to offer your content and monetize it. Meaning someone, what we do often is we have, a, we have some preview content, some teaser content on the channel, whets people's appetite. And then we, we get them right into, um, you know, a pitch for the, the full content. The full content is behind the paywall. But that's content that is valuable and that you've put together. And so we, we really help you with this part of the process. We strategize what type of content is going to be good, what type of content you have for the front of the paywall, and what kind of content you have behind the paywall. So we're going to now go on to this, um, to this, to this part of it where we're going to talk about um, how you would monetize this, how you would make money with this. So let's talk about these, these things. Subscription fees. Okay, this, this is very important with subscription fees. Now, at first I didn't understand this. I, I, when, I, when I got into this, to this business, years and years ago and in fact we got into this business around 2005 and uh, then it was around 2012 really when we started um, delving into operating our own content channels on Roku and then after that we developed this platform we said this is working so well for us we want everybody to be able to have uh, this great opportunity that we have. So we put a platform together to do it. I did not, subscription fees were not on my radar. I did not think subscription fees were going to be significant. I thought that this one was going to be more significant, ad revenue. I thought if I could just get those commercials to play. Now, ad revenue is a great supplemental revenue to subscription fees. But the truth is, if you have in-demand content, subscription far fees are going to far exceed ad revenue. So it's just, just the way it is. But you have to have the right content for that. So uh, the part of the thing we help people do, we help them figure out what the right content is. If you have something that you're passionate about, and that's what we, we do need to state, you need to be passionate and you need to have some material, you need to have your videos, uh, but if you have that and you've got that together, then what we start to do is say, what is the right mix of this? Subscription fees, ad revenue, sponsorships, and then selling your collections of content. So we look at, we look at all of these items and we kind of help you uh, more or less take these things and put them down. But um, we do say it's good when you come to us to to have a few videos. We, we like to see at least three to five videos as a really good idea to be able to get the content. We're certainly happy to talk with you, but to start, you're really gonna need about three to five videos in here. So subscription fees, I would say number one, if you have in-demand content, people want that content and it's demand subscriptions. And subscriptions have a great, little mechanism 
So this is the first year and you get all these subscribers. Great. Now this is the second year. You've got more subscribers. Oh, that's good. But don't forget that now you're getting all the subscribers from the first year and you're getting the subscribers from the second year. Minus anyone that drops out. You do have a few subscribers who drop out from year to year. Oh, now it's the third year. Wow, we're up here. So we're getting all the subscribers from the first year, all the subscribers from the second year, and all the subscribers now from the third year. And it just keeps building like that. That's a little secret with subscriptions. Remember that company, Time Life? Yeah, they always want to sell. You're thinking, well, how do they make money? This was a well-kept secret. And I mean a well-kept secret of corporate America that now is available to you. Subscriptions are a key. Ad revenue is a supporting income. So when we look at ad revenue, you want to play ads? Well, let's in your free content, let's go ahead and play ads because we can do that in free content. Now, the platforms, this is really important to note, like Roku, etc. don't let you do both. Don't let you charge people and play ads at the same time. So you can't play programmatic ad, what's called ad inserts. You can't do those and charge people. That is against the policy. But what we do is we say, hey, there's a bunch of free content, preview content, put ads in that, no problem. All the ads go in there. And then when it comes down to someone subscribing, um, then they're paying a subscription. So now instead of watching those ads, they see, they see the content. And it works really, really well. Sponsorships. Uh, so this is like brand partnering, and this is really good. If you have access to brands, and then what you do is you look at your topic, you look at what your topic is, and you say, who do I have access to that is on my topic? And so you go ahead and you figure out the companies, go ahead, contact the companies, pitch the companies, and offer them a sponsorship. This especially gets easier and easier and easier as you come as you come and build your channel and build your following with us. And then content sales. Uh, this is where we're talking about training and tutorials. It's like, do you, do you want to learn to play the guitar? Well, my Roku channel teaches you to learn to play the guitar. That's just an idea. So you do a bunch of videos, you play the guitar, you have the simple lessons at first, people like your personality, like your style. And then they come in, oh, well, I'm going to order the full guitar lessons. In fact, I'm going to order monthly lessons. And then, and then, the, and then you're going to post your monthly guitar lessons and people are going to subscribe, tune in and get those guitar lessons. This is how, this is how in a tough economy like this, this economy, you create another stream of revenue and you do this by pursuing your passions and pursuing the things that you love. So here at Macmillan, we can help you do all of this. Um, we can help you develop your channel. Um, we we initially organize your content for you. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna suggest uh, we're gonna work with you. Get your categories. And we're gonna say here's the categories. We train you then how to put your various videos in the categories. We set up everything in the back end. Now, mind you, we're a little bit different than other shops. We're actually full service. A lot of our competitors, especially those with really unbelievably cheap prices, are not full service and they kind of leave you to get your own channel published. They might give you the file and then they say, hey, good luck, we're done. Oh, that's not what you want, believe me. There's a lot of app store uh, policies and procedures you don't want to run afoul of because you can get tied up for a long time trying to get that channel, um, trying to get that channel launched. So we are full service. We help you. We help you every step of the way uh, with that. Uh, we'll also give you some opportunities. We have a lot of effect, uh, effective strategies for marketing promotion. Those are extra things. Um, you can have us do those. We're going to give you some ideas right up front about how you can promote. Um, and then you can even say to us, hey, look, I'd like to run an ad campaign. I'd like to you know, get subscribers. I'd like to start a mechanism for me getting subscribers. We, we certainly work with that. And of course, we ongoing give um, technical support. So the things I want to leave you with today are basically in this challenging economic landscape, 
there is a way that you can actually increase your income. And that way that you increase your income is by creating a Roku or and other streaming channels. Remember, we can put this on all these other platforms, Fire TV, Android, I, iOS, Apple, you know, it's iPhone and, um, and iPad. We can also put it on Apple TV, also Samsung Smart TV if you wanna go that direction. Um, we can take your content, we put it on there and you monetize. And here's the secret, every time you move to a new platform, that is a whole new stream of income. So let's say you start out on Roku. That's one stream of income. You can add Fire TV to the top of that. You can add, you know, your mobile app to the top of that. Apple TV to the top of that. It works like that. It stacks. That's how you get even more income and more revenue. So if you want to start unlocking this, you want to take that potential that you have in your content and you want to really unleash that then go ahead, contact us today. Um, I, you know, I'm I'm always happy to 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 work with people uh, who want to take their content and they want to take it to the next level and they want to earn that extra revenue and that extra income that can come from this. So um, I really appreciate you um, uh, so listening to this today. Thank you if you've made it all th- all the way through. Wow, that was great. And uh, please like and subscribe this content. Um, if you if you like us, subscribe to us, and um, that really helps us out. And just contact us if you would like to start earning this extra revenue that you can earn with the Roku channel. Thank you, and uh, we appreciate you listening to today's podcast. And we'll see you soon. <laughs>